Welcome boys and girls to another video. You see that seat right there? This is inside of a 2013 Mercedes C-Class. The question of the day is that car leather or is that simply vinyl that's made to look like car leather? Hey party people, welcome back to yet another video. So is it leather? Is it vinyl? What is it? Because this is a Mercedes Benz and I've played this game numerous times just to let you know, which is I test people and say, hey, you see that car? It's a Mercedes Benz. Check out the inside. Uh, do you think that's leather car seating or do you think it's vinyl? Oh, well, uh, looks like it's leather to me. Well, okay, it lo looks like, but what do you think? Well, I don't know, it's a Mercedes Benz. I'm guessing it probably is leather. Well, how do you tell? Do you smell it? Do you feel it? Do you rub it? Do you poke at it? Do you prod at it? Literally, how do you tell? Well, there's a few basic ways that you could tell. If you are the original owner, you could look at the manufacturer's window sticker and you will see if it says, in fact, true leather. And it won't say true leather. It will uh, tell you what type of leather it is. Now, unfortunately, the industry is filled with so much misrepresentation Often what happens, particularly with Mercedes-Benz, is they will call it some version of vinyl, but they will add leather into the equation. For example, leather text or MB text. Something that suggests it's leather, but in fact it really isn't leather. So it's really just vinyl. Or it may say that you have leather, but when you read the fine print, or the hyped up terminology, you'll realize, wait a minute, leather apportioned seating, leather appointed seating, leather seating surfaces, what does that actually mean? Well, that's a video for another time. Really the point of the video is this, it really doesn't matter whether it's leather or vinyl when it comes to cleaning your car leather. I have a feeling that many of you are on the fence. You have a car that maybe has vinyl in it, but maybe it has leather in it. When you bought it, if you bought it new, maybe you don't remember uh, because it's such a blur and maybe it's been long enough where you just truly don't remember and you don't have the original window sticker to reference. Or maybe you bought a used car and it was suggested or implied, whether it's implicitly or explicitly like, oh yeah, leather seating. Well. Once again, the point of the video is it really doesn't matter when it comes to finding the best car leather cleaner. You can pick any car leather cleaner you want and use it on both vinyl and leather. By the way, you can pick any all-purpose cleaner you want and use it on your car leather, by the way. You know why? Because this is the real point of the video. And I've addressed this in many videos now because I feel that it's a topic that is not addressed significantly enough or often enough. And that is this, that in 99.99999% of the time, your car, regardless of cost, regardless of make, model, uh, entry level cost, high performance exotic, a luxury sedan matters not because it will have what's called coated car leather, which means that it's a natural material called leather, comes from animals, but it's been coated with a synthetic coating. So really what you're dealing with is not a natural material anymore. Now what you're dealing with is a synthetic clear coating on your natural material, which is why to come full circle, it really doesn't matter what type of cleaner you choose so long as that it's safe for your car upholstery. Now, I get it. You will read many labels on car upholstery cleaners and it will say, do not use on leather. The reason they say that is because they gotta cover their ass. It's just that simple. Because every car has coated car leather. To this date of filming, the only exception that I can even think of in all my travels is the Ford trucks, and I believe it's Ford, it's called the King Ranch Edition, and it has uncoated leather. It's literally like sitting on a saddle that's meant for a horse, because they want it to patina, they want it to age and wear like uncoated natural leather, whether it's a leather belt, maybe some cowboy boots, your, uh, your, your horse tackle and gear, whatever they call it, that is the only exception that I can even think of to date on any car manufacturer, regardless of cost, that does not have coated leather, which means that an all-purpose cleaner will indeed work and it will indeed be safe. 
But with that said is you always default to two basic rules. That's where you start out, but that's not where you have to end up. And what I mean by this is this. What does the manufacturer say on the labeling? Specifically, the, the directions or any warnings. So if you see where it says, do not use on car leather, okay, that's an indicator, but if it's safe for virtually every other material in your car, like vinyl and plastic and cloth, then I know it's gonna be safe on your coated car leather. That's just a cover your ass moment. Secondly, regardless of the product, you always test in an inconspicuous spot. Because when it comes to cars, literally anything goes. And what I mean by this in this moment is, for example, your car, if it's used, or even if it's not used, because I've seen situations where a person has purchased a brand new car, and in fact, something happened between the point of leaving the doors of the manufacturing plant, the assembly line, and you taking delivery of it, something happened and they had to call out a mobile guy to repair the leather because it got scuffed or scratched or whatever and the guy redyed it which really isn't redying it's not like you think it is really what it is is a form of paint and body work so they will sand it they will prep it and they will shoot it with some paint and that's really what it is and then they'll clear coat it hopefully and in that instance that might be something that you are suddenly faced with and it's not original equipment any longer. It's original equipment that's now been touched by somebody else that used inferior techniques and now possibly, and this is so rare, especially on a brand new car, used cars is a different story. That happens all the time, uh, especially if you buy a car from a dealer lot because they have to refurbish cars in order to make them ready for sale. So they often re-dye leather to get it sold because it'll look all perfect, but that re-dyeing process or spray painting process, to be rudimentary about it, will not hold up like original equipment car leather will. So that's why, as one of the rules, you always test in an inconspicuous spot. So this is me not trying to push any dedicated car leather cleaner on you or any car upholstery cleaner on you. It's me simply stating like, hey, by the way, check this out. I'm just trying to be a voice of reason for you guys, which comes to like, gee, I've got vinyl upholstery. Do I need a dedicated vinyl uh, rubber plastic all-purpose cleaner, uh, multi-surface cleaner? They have endless names and terminology for these basic cleaners. Or do I need a dedicated car leather cleaner because my car leather is so fragile and delicate and special and I really need this special cleaner for it? Well, I'm here to tell you, in essence, you don't need to worry about it. You don't actually have to try to figure out what it is. Is it vinyl? Is it leather? Matters not. So I'm trying to get you off the fence. I'm trying to get you to take action. I'm trying to demystify this world that is so embellished and hyped up and filled with so much bad information and try to clarify some of these key points when it comes to auto detailing, cosmetic car care, car care in general. So with that said, I hope you've learned something. I always check the links below because there's always gonna be links that'll take you to my website where I go into great detail, pun intended, as to the type of cleaners that I recommend, that I use professionally, or I recommend to you as a car owner. With that said, leave me a comment. Let me know if you've struggled to figure out like, oh, I thought in every, for example, I thought in every Mercedes it was naturally leather. Of course, it's a Mercedes. You overpay for the car anyways, surely it's gonna be real leather, or maybe a BMW, or maybe a Lexus, whatever it is, a Jaguar. That's what I wanna know from you guys. What is your thoughts on that? Do you come to some assumptions that now I've kind of clarified for you or have shed some light on you where it's like, oh, maybe I need to rethink this. Maybe every Mercedes, BMW, Jaguar, even though it's uh, kind of priced outside of my ability to afford it, isn't made with real leather. Maybe it's made with synthetic leather. But if you own one of those cars like this car, now you're perplexed because it's like, wait, what kind of cleaner do I really need? I've got to figure out if my car actually has leather in it or not. Well, I'm here to tell you, you don't actually have to overthink it. 
That's the point of the video. But I want to hear from you guys what your experience has been. What is your understanding? What is your knowledge base? What does that look like? Display it for us. Type in the comments below. By all means, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, by all means, share the video with someone that you know has a car or that might be perplexed with the same uh, dimension of the car. With that said, in 10,000 words or less, we will see you on the next video.